Welcome into the studio. You are looking at Chidi's Q1 Pro. This is their brand new mid-sized enclosed Core XY machine with a bunch of fun features. Let's take a look. 2024 is going to be the year of Core XY machines. Every single company is, uh, if they weren't making one, they're gonna make one. And if they made one before, they're gonna make a couple more. Now me, personally, I'm more interested in the quality of the prints, not the speed of the printers. That's just my preference. And I kind of feel like I represent a, a large majority of consumers. We are more interested in the awesome filaments that go in and uh, we wanna see the cool prints that come out. Now we would like it to be fast, but I think that we value quality and uh, consistency over speed, right? Tell me in the comments below if you, if you agree with me or, or not. First, let's get the physical size of this machine out of the way. It's a mid-sized machine, but it is in a large enclosure. So it's about 18 inches deep, it's about 18 inches wide, and it's 19 inches tall here on the bench. Now with the spool loaded on the spool holder over there on the far side, it's about 27 inches wide. So it does take up a little bit of room. Chidi is kind of famous for that, right? So they like to have a solid core machine that comes shipped squared and ready to go. And then of course they clad it with these injection molded panels and it's their aesthetic. And I kind of like it, it kind of makes these printers look space age. Now this machine is Core XY, so that means it's running Clipper as you'd expect. And Clipper is the firmware of choice right now uh, for Core XY machines or anything that's printing really fast. By default, Wi-Fi is not enabled. You actually have to set that up after you go through the wizard. And when you enable Wi-Fi, it enables the web interface for this particular machine. Because this is running Clipper and because it's running Fluid, I have to give you this warning. Whenever you connect a Clipper machine to your local network, you are enabling a web management interface that enables anyone on that same local network to manage your 3D printer. That means that anyone can type in the IP address of this printer and they can control the printer completely. They can heat it up, they can cool it down, they can drive the nozzle into the build plate. They can cancel your prints, they can do all sorts of horrible, terrible things. Now this does run the Fluid web interface, which does have authentication, and you're gonna need to go to that, you're gonna go down to settings, and you'll go up to authentication, then you're gonna go ahead and add a user. The default web interface is not available on the standard HTTP protocol port, which is port 80. It's actually on a much higher port, and it's, so it's I think 10,080 eight is the port number and I'll have that on the screen. So basically it would be, if you're gonna access this in a web browser, you'd put in the IP address colon and then 10088 and that would bring up the web management interface, which is also going to be needed if you are using this inside of your slicer to do Wi-Fi printing, you're gonna need that colon and that port number in there as well. The main board in this machine is a MakerBase board, which we're seeing a lot of. Have you noticed that? Like I think like the last four or five machines I've looked at, they're all MakerBase boards, which is kind of cool. It's a quality board. And if you'd like to SSH into it, uh, understand that the root uh, login and password is MKS and MakerBase. So you can go in there and, uh, and have some fun with the machine. Just to rattle off some of the other main features before we get into some of the specifics, this machine has auto bed leveling and it has auto Z offset with baby stepping. It is dual Z. It has a built-in camera up here in the corner. It has a filament runout sensor in the tool head, and it also has a filament tangle sensor uh, here in the back. And I feel like this is progress, right? So this is, I think, the third or fourth machine that I have here that now has filament tangle detection, which is kind of nice, right? So that's something that we didn't really see until Bamboo started putting that uh, on their AMS systems with, their, with the A1 Mini and uh, the P1 and the X1 series, kind of nice. It has, of course, power loss recovery, and as I mentioned just moments ago, it has Wi-Fi 3D printing. It does not have Ethernet, which was interesting to me because it's labeled as a pro machine, but it doesn't have Ethernet. However, because it is a MakerBase board, um, it does have extra USB ports on the board itself, and if you pull off the panel, you could actually go grab a, uh, an Ethernet dongle and plug it in there and you'd be just fine. Unboxing, probably the fastest unboxing experience that I've had from opening the box to starting the first print. It was five minutes or less, which is darn impressive, which tells me that Chidi is really working on that user experience. This is gonna be a fantastic machine uh, for people who are brand new to 3 printing, as well as the higher end features that people are looking for in their second, third, uh, fourth, fifth, 10th, 20th 3D printer. Build volume says 250 by 250, by, well, 250 on the Z, but their website says it's 245 cubed. So I slide the print head around, 
There's no reason it can't reach uh, out to those edges of the build plate, so I'm gonna go with 250. The heated build plate gets up to 120 C, which is kind of warm, right? So we normally see build plates get up to about 100 C max, um, and that's, that's pretty common. It's kind of nice to see that this machine gets up to 120. One feature that sets this machine apart from all of the others is that this one has an actively heated chamber that heats up to 60 C. Chidi's machines have done that for quite some time, and that's a really impressive feature. And when you're wanting to print more exotic filaments um, or more mechanical filaments, having a heated chamber, or at least a consistent heated chamber, is a big benefit. The build plate itself is a double-sided PEI flexible magnetic sheet, which is kind of nice, but it doesn't have any alignment tabs. So it can kind of be a little bit frustrating to, to try and align it. You kind of put it in there and drop it, put it in there, drop it a few, few times, put it in there, drop it, slide it over. It's not a deal breaker, but if you're not paying attention, you can actually get the build plate up on the edge of the platform and uh, where you wouldn't be level and you might even damage your build plate. In this particular machine, this is a new tool head and it's got a new design. The front plate comes off, just literally lift that up and uh, pop it off. The hot end is not a quick change hot end, but it is one of the new cartridge styles that we're seeing that are a little bit more common. So pull this off and then there's two little bolts, pull those bolts and you can remove that hot end. The nozzle itself is a dual metal nozzle. So we're seeing that as well uh, a little bit more common now. A lot of machines are coming out with this. So dual metal nozzles basically mean that the shaft or the threads are from one particular alloy and the actual nozzle tip itself is from another alloy. And then those are merged in the manufacturing process. And one of the benefits of that is that where the threads are contacting the heater cartridge, right, or the heater block, you get a higher conductive metal that's being used there versus the nozzle itself can be something else that's a little bit more resistant uh, to abrasive materials, but it's less conductive. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get something that heats up and retains the heat, and then you get a nozzle, which is a little bit tougher, which stands up to the uh, abuse that we throw at it on these machines. Now the hot end itself on this machine gets up to 350 C, which that's 50 C more than we normally see on 3D printers like this. And that would mean that you have no problems printing filaments like PLAs and PTGs, of course, those are your lower temperature things. Um, but then you can get up to TPUs and ABSs and ASAs and nylons, right? And you're gonna be able to print that fantastically well and that pairs well with the uh, actively heated chamber. The interface itself is a 4.25 inch touch screen. Um, it's resistive touch instead of capacitive, so you just gotta make sure you touch a little bit. It's nice. And uh, of course, again, like I said, this is running Clipper and it's gonna have just everything in its place. Uh, no complaints, it works really well. Um, yeah, just very simple. As for slicing with this particular machine, I was sent over profiles for Orca Slicer, which I absolutely love. So if you've used Orca Slicer, it is a fantastic slicer. It's one of the most popular out right now. I didn't even use the uh, Chidi Slicer, I had no reason to. I grabbed the profiles for Orca Slicer, I loaded them in and uh, I added the Q1 Pro and I just began printing and I've had a fantastic experience with it. The big question, how much does this machine cost? Well, I'm pretty surprised. Early bird pricing for this machine, a mid-sized Core XY, loaded with all these features, only 469. That's pretty impressive. And I believe that their retail is 599. Still a good price at 599, 469, obviously way better, but you can tell that Chidi's, uh, Chidi's in the game and uh, they're there to compete at this uh, mid-sized enclosed Core XY machine at that mid-price point. Now, who's this machine for? Well, you can tell that Chidi's aiming for everyone. The unboxing experience, the user experience, the feature set, the simplicity, Orca Slicer, everything about this machine tells you that Chidi is targeting everyone. They are targeting novices and they are targeting experts with the higher end features. So this is going to be a machine that is gonna be a great first 3D printer for anyone who's looking to get into the hobby. And this is also going to be a fantastic machine for those of you who are interested in expanding um, your arsenal of machines and maybe even printing some filaments um, and some materials that, uh, that you've never tried before. Cooling on this particular machine is pretty simple. It has a single parts cooling fan that's kind of diverted uh, to the front and uh, side, well, partially front and the left and right sides. And it has a curtain blower on this side, right here, which would be what? Your right side if you're looking at it, and uh, which is adequate. Um, matter of fact, I found that when I turned that thing up to 100%, it was a hurricane inside that machine. Kind of loud, but uh, it 
flat moves some air, so it was quite impressive. As far as filtering of air on this machine, there is no filter. I just look in the back of the machine and I can see straight in with a fan, um, but it does look like that it has mounts to put an activated uh, charcoal filter there, but there just isn't one. On the inside of the machine, it has a filament purge bucket and a filament wiper, and it does do that process uh, at the beginning of, um, of every print to kind of keep the nozzle clean for uh, the bed leveling process but there's gonna have to be some changes that take place there because it doesn't necessarily wipe before the start of every print. And so sometimes you can get a little bit of nozzle ooze um, and it'll drag that out to the middle of the build plate. That's just startup G-code. That, that's something that's easily fixed inside the slicer. Filament changes on this machine were a bit odd. Um, it's the first time I've ever had a 3D printer ask me to cut the filament to do a filament change, but it's done here at the top. So it's pretty simple, right? So there's a little retention ring uh, for the PTFE tube that goes into the top of the tool head. Push down that ring, pull up the PTFE tube. It came up nice and easy. Cut the filament, pull the spool off, push the PTFE back down in, um, and then you tell this to just purge out the filament and it cleans it all out. So, I mean, it's simple. Um, it's just the first time I've uh, ever experienced that. So let's talk about print quality because I think ultimately that's the most important thing with these machines, right? So people want a machine that's reliable and they want it to put out great results. So this is a fun little Easter egg and I'll have the uh, model in the uh, description. I printed this in Polymaker's Silk Pink and I have to say it turned out absolutely incredible. You're talking about speed with a lot of little movements and it came out absolutely perfect. So hopefully you're seeing some B-roll of that right now. It's impressive. Another fun print that we got right here, this is a Pac-Man planter. And so if you can see right there, I have some planters with some plants and uh, we're gonna be putting a plant in this here in just a moment. This is a low poly Pac-Man and I think it turned out really, really, really nice. Um, Overhangs, that's a, pr that's a pretty steep overhang. And uh, well, I guess it'd be about right there. So that's a pretty steep overhang. And uh, you can see that the cooling had a little bit of trouble uh, coming around on that underside right there. Nothing bad. Um, on the underside, I think it did all right. There's some little bit of cooling mistakes, but uh, that's, that's nothing that I think that, uh, that isn't fixable, at least by cranking up the air. I had the air turned up to about 50% on that, uh, that blower fan on the side and I suppose I could reprint it and try and turn that up and see if we could get some better cooling. But I think ultimately it turned out really, really, really well. No artifacts on the print anywhere except just uh, those, those overhangs. So I think it turned out really nice. This one kind of made me sad just a little bit. So this is a Skeletor print and you'll see the, the final print here in just a moment. But this is a Skeletor print uh, that I picked up off printables. And this is a really fun print, but take a look at his head right there above his eyes. And that is where I was printing with this machine. Uh, I had the chamber turned up to 55C and I needed to get some shots of it printing. And I opened the door. Remember I had the window open with some air kind of coming in here uh, because this is ABS. This is a Chidi's odorless ABS, um, their rapid ABS, which like I said, it's not odorless, but it is definitely reduced odor. And so I still had the window open because obviously just because you can't smell it doesn't mean it's not hurting you. Um, I wanted to keep uh, you know the air fresh in here. But I opened the door for just a few minutes to get some shots and that was enough to get the front here to lift off the build plate ever so slightly, which gave me this line right above his eyes and I was so mad, darn it, because it was turning out perfect. But I uh, had plenty of ABS purple, which from Chidi, which is actually some good looking filament and that is that guy right there. So I'm gonna remove the supports on that guy and you'll be able to see it. It turned out really, really, really nice. I'm impressed. Back here on this corner where the filament spool holder is mounted, there is a quick connector, a coupler, right? Where you feed in the filament. Also, there is the purge bucket on the inside with a filament tangle sensor as well. All of that leads me to believe that there has got to be something coming from Chidi uh, for some type of multi-material or multi-filament system. Um, I have not got any confirmation from them that that's happening. That's just my own assessment. And whether that comes on this machine or whether that comes in future machines, I don't know. But uh, I just thought it was interesting that they would choose a coupler here at the end of this, like over here, and, uh, and that they would have the purge bucket with a wiper and they would have that filament tangle sensor. Hmm. Makes you think, doesn't it? 
Tell me in the comments below. Do you think I'm I'm off base there, or do you think uh, do you think this is, these are subtle signals that that's what's coming? Tell me. I'd love to know. Now, as far as vibrations go, this machine does not vibrate half as much as the other machines that uh, that we have that are Core XY machines with input shaping. The resonance compensation, you can hear it go through the frequencies, but ultimately when this thing is sitting on this bench, which is on casters, the other machines go nuts shaking this bench. This one doesn't. And even though it's printing at speed, you reach up and put your hand on the enclosure and it's just got a nice, uh, I would say moderate vibration. From the moment we unboxed it to the moment I started printing with it and playing with it, I am impressed. And I even emailed Cheaty right away and said, oh my gosh, this is one of the best experiences that I've had with a 3D printer. It puts it right up there in the top, probably two or three. And uh, I'm super impressed with it. And I think it would be a fantastic machine for everyone. Um, if you're interested, like I said, I'll have links on the screen and in the description. I really enjoy doing this. And I love sharing these machines with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me give a huge shout out to our Patreon and our YouTube members. You are what make this content possible. Thank you so much. And uh, I will see you all in the next one.